the season of winter started and it is one of the greatest seasons of the year. It is a period during which nights are very long. One can take a long rest and yet will still have time to take advantage of the golden opportunity of performing Qiyamul Layl. Qiyamul Layl is one of the best acts of worship by virtue of which the slave draws nearer to Allah Azza wa Jal. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to become very happy whenever the winter started and would greet, he would greet the season of winter and say, Welcome, O winter! It is the time when blessings descend, a time when nights are long for us to pray Qiyam. This is how they used to deal with this life. Everything for them was used, was based on the scale or weighed with the scale of Sharia. What brings them closer to Allah? What saves them from the punishment of Allah? What helps them earn the reward of Allah? Qiyamul Layl is very honoring to the slave. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Al-Bayhaqi, classified as sound by Al-Albani. He said, Jibreel came to me and said, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, I'lam, know sharaf al -mu'min, that the honor of the believer, he or she, is by him or her praying Qiyamul Layl. We want to be honorable in the sight of Allah. We need to sacrifice part of that night and stand before Allah and pray. For this honor, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray, but his prayer was very long. Aisha radiallahu anha describes this prayer, describes the type of qiyam the Prophet wasallam used to have. And this is reported by Muslim. She said, he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would pray so long that his feet would crack. Subhanallah. This must have been very long, and indeed it was. It is enough to know that the Prophet ﷺ, in one of the nights, as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud tells us, prayed in the first rak'ah, only the first rak'ah. He started with Surah Al-Baqarah, and then followed that with Surah Al-Nisa, then Surah Al-Imran, five chapters of the Qur'an, all in one rak'ah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would cry. He would cry. Aisha also tells us, and this is reported by Ibn Hibban. One night, it was her turn and she said, leave me, I want to worship my Lord. She said, I love being near to you, meaning I'm not going to disturb you. I just want to be near you. And then she started describing the prayer of the Prophet ﷺ, what he did in his salah. She said, he started salah and started crying. And crying. She said, he cried so much that his beard became wet. 
I want you brothers and sisters to imagine how much did he cry to wet his beard. Those of us who have beards know what it takes to make this wet. And he had a thick beard sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It doesn't end here. She said, and he continued to cry until he wet his garment. Allahu Akbar. And continued to cry until he wet under his feet. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. All of that, all of that, he used to do sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, though he is the dearest, he is the most beloved to Allah. Why don't we do that? Or some of that? But why is this part of the night so honorable? In the book of Al Imam Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, every night during the last third of the night, our Lord, the Almighty, the Exalted, descends to the worldly heaven. And now I want to bring to your attention that him descending subhanahu wa ta'ala is a manner in a manner that befits his majesty subhanahu. It's not like any thing that you can imagine because Allah says, Laysa kamithlihi shayt. There is nothing like Allah Azza wa Jal. So don't try to imagine how Allah descends. And then, what happens when this happens, when Allah Azza wa Jal descends? He, the Almighty says, says, Is there anyone who is supplicating me? And I will honor his supplication. Is there anyone who's asking of me? I will give him. Is there anyone who's seeking my forgiveness? I will forgive him. And this is every single night. You see why, brothers and sisters, this is so honorable? You see where the believer draws his honor? It is because Allah descends and the, ble the believing slave, male or female, stands before Allah during that distinct period of the night. Another reason why the Prophet ﷺ used to pray so much at night is because Qiyam al-Layl as he informs us and this is reported by Muslim he said the best prayer after the mandatory Salah is Qiyam al-Layl and he was always a leading example a role model Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in everything so he was teaching his Ummah how to deal with these religious texts. They're not just texts to hear and enjoy or memorize, but rather to act upon. Praying at night is something that reflects on the person's face. You see it bright. Have you ever come across a person you, you looked at and you say, Subhanallah, this man's face is so bright. And you wonder why. Well, it is the result of worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal. And this, Qiyamul Layl is the best type of worship that would reflect, as the scholar said, that would reflect on the person's face. Brightness, light. As it is always the case, Allah Azza wa Jal gives us fruits and rewards for what He tells us to do out of His generosity and mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Allah Azza wa Jal with those who pray Qiyam would love them, laugh for them, and rejoice at their action. And laughter and rejoicing is again in a way that befits His Majesty. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is re reported by Al Bayhaqi, he said, There are three types of people whom Allah loves, laughs to, and rejoice, rejoices with them, meaning with their actions. And he mentioned one of them a slave who has a beautiful wife and a comfortable bed. He abandons all of that and stands up in prayer during the night. Allah would say, He abandoned His desire and comfort for me. You're giving something up, not for anyone. It is for Allah. And therefore you deserve to be loved by Him. And when Allah laughs for the behavior or action of the slave and rejoices, it means he is pleased and would reward. If nothing else other than him loving me and you, then this would have been sufficient as a reward. We all want Jannah, well Qiyam brings Jannah, entitles us to be admitted into Jannah. And this again is reported by Al-Bayhaqi, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He وسلم, said, O people, feed people, feed others, spread the greeting with salam, and pray at night when people are sleeping. You will peacefully Enter Jannah. Peacefully. Expiation of sin. Again reported by Al-Bayhaqi, classified as authentic by Al-Albani. The Prophet ﷺ said, O people, pray Qiyamul Layl. For Qiyamul Layl expiates, wipes out your sins. One might say, well, it's difficult to get up before Salatul Fajr. Well, there are two things here. Number one, we are in a season where nights are very long. For example, now Salatul Isha is about 6.30, 6.35. Salatul Fajr is almost 5. You see how many hours there are? But the second point here is more important is that we do not act according to the sunnah of the Prophet What is the sunnah of the Prophet What is the practice of Muhammad He disliked socializing after Salat al-Isha. He would rest. He would go to sleep unless there was a dire need for him to stay up. But for us, we don't start thinking about going to bed except three, four, five hours after we finish Salatul Isha. We're lucky to, to get up for Salatul Fajr, let alone waking up before it. If we act according to the Sunnah, if we practice like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, practiced who was sent to teach us how to live our lives, Islam, it's not a set of rituals, brothers and sisters. Islam is a way of life. If we take Islam as a way of life, it will make a change in our lives. But if we deal with it, as other faiths do, on Saturdays or Sundays, and then the rest of the week is for me to deal with it as I please, then it's not going to make the change that it's supposed to make in our lives. Another fruit for 
praying Qiyam al-Layl is becoming deserving of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. In the book of Imam Ahmad, and it's classified as authentic by Al-Albani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Rahim Allahu Rajulan, may Allah be merciful with a man. Rahim Allah, it is either that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was supplicating that may Allah be merciful with him, or informing that Allah is merciful towards the following type of person. Who wakes up at night to pray and wakes his wife up to pray with him. And then he continues and then said, And may Allah have mercy on a woman who wakes up to pray at night and she wakes her husband up to pray with her. This is the best couple. This is a sign of true love. You want to see if your husband loves you? If your wife loves you? See if she does that or if he does that. Because real love, as I've repeated many times, is when a person wants his or her spouse to be with him or her in Jannah, not in this life only. This is all in the hereafter. Anything in this life? Will we get anything in this life? Yes. In the book of Imam al-Bayhaqi, classified as authentic by al-Albani, the Prophet ﷺ said, Pray Qiyam al-Layl for it protects your bodies from sicknesses. Is that it? Is this the only reward we get in this life? No. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim, there is not a time when a Muslim slave coincides his supplication, being up and supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal during the last part of the night, Except that Allah Azza wa Jal and asks Allah Azza wa Jal for anything that is good, except that Allah Azza wa Jal will give him that. We don't know what's good and what's bad for us because we don't know the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. A lot of people get into business and then they become bankrupt. A lot of people desire to marry a certain person, man or woman, and they strive hard and they go through with it, and then they end up divorced. If we get into the practice of asking Allah during this honorable part of the night, and ask Him to take care of our affairs, after all, He is the one who has control over this life. So we spoke about Qiyam and we spoke about things that we get out of Qiyam, but one might say, okay, I'm trying, but how do I do it? How can I, are there things to do to help me pray Qiyam al-Layl? Yes, there are. Scholars listed few things. One of them is not to eat too much, especially at night. In general, but especially at night. Because that will make you feel heavy, and thus, becomes very difficult for you to wake up. Not to overexhaust yourself during the day in things that are not needed. Because that will also reflect on you and your ability to wake up for Qiyam al Going to bed early, as per the practice of the Prophet ﷺ, and trying to, to sleep the qaylula, that small short nap around Dhuhr time, before or after. And when I say short, I mean short, like 15, 20 minutes. A lot of people take qaylula for a couple of hours. 
Well, we can't, we can't find time. We, no one told you to sleep for two hours. All you need is about 15 minutes. And it will suffice you. It will energize you. And it will help you in Qiyam al Something very important is to remember that you can't do it on your own, so ask Allah. Supplicate Allah, ask His help in waking you up. I had a friend, one of the brothers back in Chicago. He used to pray Qiyamul Layl when he was 10 years of, of, of age. He would wake up without an alarm. One time he said, and he was a very simple brother. Very simple. And I'm not talking about a scholar. Simple meaning, I'm not talking about a scholar. Just a normal person. He used to tell me, Brother Abu Abdullah, Alhamdulillah, I wake up without an alarm. And at times when I'm delayed, I feel someone moving my feet. And I wake up and there's no one. And I realize then, he said, that it's time for me to wake up. And it's a way Allah Azza wa is waking me up. He used to pray two to three hours every night, year long, not only during the winter. So when you ask Allah, He will help you. Lastly, and this is very crucial, stay away from sins. Al-Hasan al-Basri said, Beware of sinning because it will prevent you from praying Qiyam al Don't overeat, don't stay up late, don't exhaust yourself in something that's useless. Try to sleep that short nap, ask Allah's help. It's very important to ask His help. And it's equally important to stay away from sins. And then you will live a life that you've never experienced before. When you start Qiyam, you feel that your heart is not in your body. It's flying somewhere up there. You'll feel the nearness of Allah. You'll feel closer to Allah. We need to work hard because it becomes paradise living in this life. And as one of the companions said, and with this I conclude, he said, had it not been for seeking knowledge, fasting days, and praying during the night, I would not want to live, to continue living in this life. It would become a very blissful life when Allah enables me and you to pray Qiyam Layl. اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا عافنا و...